Hey everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today is the first time that I'm going to talk about Thelonious Monk. He's one of my great influences, one of my favorite piano players, and such a character. And the recording that we're going to talk about today is his composition, Friday the 13th. This is the first Monk tune I ever learned, I ever heard. And I've always kind of been fascinated by it. The recording that we're going to look at He's done a couple recordings of this, but the one that we're going to look at is the one that's live from Town Hall, the Thelonious Monk Orchestra. It's a great band. Phil Woods plays in it, Donald Byrd, Pepper Adams, Art Taylor, Sam Jones. It's a cool band, and I really like this recording of it a lot. This is what it sounds like. I can only play you a little bit of it or YouTube's going to yank it right off. My least favorite thing about YouTube and making YouTube videos is that, I mean, if I had you guys like in my living room with me, we the first thing we would do is listen to that entire recording and talk about it, but we can't do it. So you're gonna have to do that on your own. You're gonna have to pull up the recording. It's from the Keep News collection. If you're, if you're not lucky enough to own it, you can just find it on YouTube. I've made a transcription of it. I, you know, I never transcribed it before just the last week, but but I really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of what makes Monk sound like Monk. And I think this was the way to do it because as you can see, at first I kind of give you an overview of his, of the form of the tune, of the melody, of the way that he comps over it, of the, the horn parts. Um, and then, and then I, I transcribed his solo on it so that we can actually see, maybe start to see what Thelonious Monk was thinking about as he soloed. And if, you, if you'd like to have this transcription, I'm going to put it on my website and you can click the card on the screen and it'll take you right over to the shop on my website where you can get it. But first I ought to tell you what the chords are. G, just G major, F7, E flat 7, D7. Those are the chords of the song. Uh, further on when we are when we check out his solo, I've got the chords written down all the time. But you can see it, you can see it here too. G, F, E flat, D. That's the easy way to play a bass line for this song, is just to go two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just to play G, F, E flat, and D. Kind of sounds like hit the road, Jack, right? Here's the first thing that we're going to realize today that Thelonious Monk does to sound like Thelonious Monk. It's using a fourth in a very strong way. Now, you know, a lot of times when we hear fourths, we think of Asian music like that. And, and it's kind of because we don't hear it a lot in Western music. We don't hear those two notes. You know, we always add the third. But if we just hear the fourth, like the perfect fourth like that on a strong beat, it's going to all of a sudden just sound a little bit odd to our ears. And that's, that's the essence of what Thelonious Monk tried to do, is sound a little bit odd to our ears, to do a little something different than all the other bebop players were doing at the time, and think outside the box. So there we go, there's our first clue. How about this one? This is really cool, actually. He's just playing the third and seven of an F7 chord, right? The A and the E flat, and it's a B in the melody. So that is cool because it's the sharp 11 of F7. And all he does is the third and seven, just by himself. That's what he's going to play. Here again. Now he's got the root in the seven in his left hand, but there's the third. And we're here. That's a great chord for F7. This is the first time that we learn how Thelonious Monk thinks about F7 in the context of this tune. That it's not only F7, but that it is definitely F13 with a sharp 11. And you'll see it time and time again as we go through this tune. So the 13 is the D right here. The sharp 11 is in the melody. That's the B. Yeah, so 
let's let's hear it again how he plays it solo just this line repeated and he repeats it okay now when the horns come in it's so simple it's here he adds the fifth degree to start out on the G chord and just have this I think that's so powerful it's like a power chord Part writing 101 right here. He's just covering the thirds and the sevens. That's what I always tell you to do, right? The most important notes of the chord. Once in a while, the fifth. So you can hear how the melody fits over that if I sing it. players just barely sneaking in this E note so that it's like a G13 or something. Um, and, and, and here's something. I'm not going to tell you yet whether or not I think it's G or G7 or G major 7 because it kind of switches as we go through the tune and that's kind of cool. Okay, but for right now it's like G power chord with the 13th added. So let me, let me uh, I'll start here and then show you how that sounds. first place is this counter melody existing at the same time with the melody. It goes like this. Right here. So the very first time I ever heard this, it was a piano duet. I talked about it recently in my video about Mary McPartland. But she was just playing this while the melody happened. With, I think she was playing this with her left hand and this with her right hand. Uh, may, you know, may, maybe she was playing this whole, whole thing, but what I heard was the counter melody and the root notes. So the root notes going down, like we've been doing. Right? And then this counter melody. And I thought that was so nice, the way that it fit with the melody. Oh, do, 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 do. It's a B natural. That's the note in the melody. Against this B flat. Are you kidding me? It's here. So right off the bat, we've got bo -do -do -da, and I'm singing a G. Hold on, do you remember that? Let's have you look at the melody at the same time. Yeah, so this same melody, we see how it exists with this counter melody. If we look at this and this. So first we've got a G note and an F sharp note. Da 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 da. And here's a B flat and a B, right? Da 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 da. It's that interval. That is monkish. It's got monk written all over it. Da. because it doesn't sound like we want it to sound, like it sounds foreign to our, to our ears. And that's what makes monk monk. Right? Okay, back to it. Now you think, oh good, finally some consonants. Right here, we've got a G in the melody, and, and we're just playing uh, a G here. But, but if you add the, the other note, there comes your, your dissonance. There's the note I'm singing. There's the note in the harmony right here. The C and the B is the note. 
note in the melody. It's a G major chord. We've got a major seventh right there. So that tells us that it's G major, but you know what? It's not going to be the case through his whole solo. And that's kind of cool. It's like he doesn't have to name it, really. Most of the time, it does act as G major, but as we get toward the end of the solo, it's going to act as G7. I think that's really cool. This one is a sus chord. We've got F7 with a sus note. So the B flat is our sus note. And then we've got an E flat chord that's the exact same. It's just moving it down a whole step, and then we move it down a half step to be the same in D. So these three chords are the same. We've got F7 sus, E flat 7 sus, D7 sus. And they all resolve, right? The B flat gives way to the A, that's the third of the F chord, and the same, 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 same. All right. Now, when Thelonious starts to comp, I just wrote this for fun because this is all this is all he does to comp at the beginning. He just goes. It's like he combines this and this kind of, isn't it? Yeah. But I think he really likes the way that that power chord. He's playing power chords ahead of his time. Thelonious. Oh my gosh, you're a rock god. To give this kind of a jump is the texture change in the piano, and that's cool too. It shocks your ear. That's what Thelonious does. He shocks your ear. All right, here comes his solo. We're going to pick it apart a bit. It starts at 312. I've marked it right there. That's how he starts, and that's so cool. We're going to see a lot of tritones in this solo. Here's our first one. That's how he starts, and then a descending tritone. Isn't that cool? So it's like over the E flat 7 chord and then the D7 chord. So here's the E flat. He, he hits that tritone. Then he hits that tritone. And then here he starts. Two, three, four. This is an anticipation. So it's actually playing the major 7 over this E flat 7 chord, which shocks your ear, but also leads you to D7. Here's the sharp 11 over the F chord. We'll see it time and time again. Tritone again. He's got kind of a theme, doesn't he? And he repeats it here. It shows that he knows what he's doing. I always say it. If you play something and then you remember it and play it again, people think you know what you're doing. Boo, boo, da, ba. And I love how he adds a little ghost note. Like I said, if I could be playing the recording for you as we do this, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I just can't do it though. Boo, do, da, ba, do, do. That's just an F7 chord, so nothing, nothing too special there, but I love his phrasing. Skips. These are great skips. And he anticipates the D7 again. And so far, over G, he's played those notes every time. Right? Um, not right there, but here. And here, in descending. And if you notice patterns like that, I mean, look at it. He does it again right there. You can kind of get in his brain a little bit and, and just kind of know that when he sees when he has the major chord happening, he hears these notes. It's a pentatonic scale. There's a skip right up to the strong seven. It's really cool. There was a strong seven right there as well, wasn't there? Yeah. Here's another strong seven. So he's got the F seven. Now it's the E flat seven. Seven. Loves it. He loves the way that seven sounds. And here we go again with these notes we've already heard. <laughs> 
This is the first outside playing that he really does here. I've spelled it E flat, G flat, B, but we can think of it as a B triad. Like D sharp, F sharp, B. So that's a device that he used to go outside right there. Over the G chord, he thinks up a third, play a, a major triad. It sounds kind of wicked cool, doesn't it? Just for a second, and then he's right back to F7. And then here, that's all just easy again. But then we've got our first 16th notes at 333. Sometimes I give you a little timestamp. That's easy, just an, a D9. All right, let me readjust. Okay, here we are at the top of the next page. And this is where we see Thelonious Monk launch into something that he's known for, something that he does all the time, and it's called a whole tone scale. You see it, it starts at this F7 chord. It starts on the root note, and let's, uh, let's sing this whole tone scale because it's hard to do and lots of fun. So let's see if we can sing those notes. And he lands on the seventh degree, as he often does, of the E flat seven chord. And drops a tritone, as he often does. Let's hear, let, listen how it sounds. There's sixteenth notes, but I'll play them slow. And then the rest of the E flat seven chord is just kind of real beboppy. Now here's our next whole tone scale, and he just does four notes of it, but he moves it. It's a different whole tone scale than we just played, and it fits over D7. It's this one. If you're unfamiliar with the whole tone scale, the way that you build it is that you just play whole tones on the piano. You know how there's half steps and whole steps? You just make a scale of whole steps. And there's only two of them because they repeat themselves, you know. The scale that starts on a D is the same scale if you started on a C. Same notes, different starting point. So he starts on a B flat on that D7 chord and descends. Just that much, that's it. And then here, he, I don't know if this is a quote or what, but it sounds like this little classical device and it's nice. It goes. It's cool and it's different than the whole rest of the solo. It's like the only time he really does something like that, which is nice too, because Thelonious, like we said before, he knows what he's doing, but sometimes I think what he wanted to do was just be out of the ordinary, and that's definitely out of the ordinary. Just a nice little classical kind of device. All the notes work over those chords, it's really cool. Here we're in E flat, and he does a nice arpeggio like an E flat. Uh, like an E flat nine chord. I like how he does that. He kind of keeps the E flat seven arpeggio going, or E flat nine, even though it's a D chord at that point. Too. He puts in a dissonance. Instead of just hitting an octave like people would do, he throws that major seven in there so that we've got a minor second of dissonance just for a second. And all of a sudden it's monk. This stuff didn't, you know, didn't like we could have attributed this to any piano player, Bud Powell, Red Garland, whoever. But when we get to this, those guys didn't do that. He knows what he's doing. It wasn't a mistake. He did it here, he did it here. He likes that dissonance. He likes that minor second. He does it here. This is different. He lands on the 
fourth degree of G. I don't know why he does that. I'm not going to pretend to guess, but it sounds good. And then this kind of becomes the theme for ending his solo. This is this is just pretty normal beboppy stuff. He does this skip right here, which is characteristic of him. A skip here, a skip here. But here we're into a groove. Look at this. That's what we talked about before, the fourth. All of a sudden it sounds a little bit foreign to our ears. And, and he continues it right here. He goes down in parallel fourths. We are not taught that in Western music. And then, and then we've got a tritone here that he hammers, which is also against, you know, box rules. So breaking rules, kicking butt, taking names, Thelonious Monk. And his phrasing here, he does just what I talk about, how you hold the first note and then you hit this one as close to beat two as you can. Three, four, one, two. This is where he just decides to, for one, change colors, use the upper register of the piano. For two, play some voicings that are pretty shocking to our ears. We've got this interval right here of a major ninth between G and A, and with a perfect fourth at the top again. So that, that's a little bit jarring, I think, but also beautiful. One, two, three, four. That's a classic F7 chord, right? Classic. changes the voicing a little bit. He still keeps a perfect fourth on the top, doesn't he? And there's a perfect fourth on the bottom. One, two, three, four. I think I messed up right there, didn't I? I think that's an eighth note. These two should be tied together, but we can't have four and a half beats in one bar. Puts the nine of the F seven. Puts the nine of the F seven chord on the bottom. It leads really nicely. This is a great big jump. I I don't ever play like this to play a third way up here high in the piano and have one note down here. Maybe I should. I think I should. And then again with this same chord. And he, he gets really high up in here. We've got a minor second on the bottom, really monk sounding, over the F7 chord, now we're on an E flat 7 chord, and we've got on the top an E flat, a G, and a C, which is cool, that chord over D7. Sounds great. So the whole rest of the solo is up an octave, and no notated down an octave. For the rest of the solo, he just, he just hops up super high. That's his chord for G, and, and this is where he fully starts to treat the G chord as not a major chord anymore, but as a dominant chord, which is cool. I think he just kind of, I don't know, leaves it up for interpretation. Like, he's the comping instrument, so he can decide whether or not it's major or dominant, just with his notes, right? One, two, three, and four. All he does is move everything down a whole step for that F7 chord. And then he does the, he moved everything down a whole step for the E flat 7 chord too. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Then he makes it a little simpler. We've got the tritone on the bottom, and then the tritone on the bottom again. He's playing the root on the top now, isn't he? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then he does these. He doesn't even finish the phrase. <laughs> so I would say, if you're keeping score, if you're taking notes, we've got some elements that are 
characteristic of Thelonious Monk. We're going to say number one is switching between swinging and straight. That's what makes this song this song, I think. Number two, perfect fourths. Perfect fourths in places you wouldn't expect them, and perfect fourths, uh, parallel perfect fourths as well, right? The use of tritones in strong places. We've got one there, we've got one there. Both in his comping, in his harmonies, and in his melodic contours. Jumping a tritone away is something that he does quite a bit. He even starts his solo like that, right? Tritones, tritones, tritones for days. Next element, the power chord. I think he finds power and beauty in fifths, simple fifths. Remember, we also see it in his comping right here, right? Another element is his use of strange intervals, minor ninths or minor seconds, major seconds, major ninths, uh, major sevenths, all intervals that are very close together he loves to use. And remember how, I mean, I think the perfect example of that is the way that the melody fits with the harmony. We talked about that when I was singing the melody, do you remember? Ba -da -da -da. There's the first one. Da -da -da -da. There's the second one. I'm looking at playing these notes, right? Ba -da -da -da. Those are very characteristic of his sound as well. The whole tone scale is the next one. He uses it over dominant chords. He uses the whole tone scale that starts on the root of the dominant chord. Right, if he were to keep this one going, it would land on a D. Sometimes, you know, he doesn't have to start on the root, but that's the one that he uses. So if you wonder which whole tone scale to play over F7, it's the one that starts on an F. Easy peasy. The other thing that I didn't mention as we were going through it, but I'd like to mention it now, is his sense of rhythm and his displacement and syncopation. So as we get into the end here, I mean, he does the most grooving stuff, right? Double do boo day ba boo ba boo day ba 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 ba. That's straight too, I think. Boo day da, and then ba 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. All of a sudden, all of these strong stabs that he does are in places that you wouldn't expect them. You're like, what? When, when's he going to play again? I don't know. When's he going to play again? Uh, and, and you try to think that you can like predict how it's going to sound, but it's different every bar. It took me a little while to transcribe these just because of the rhythms. I had to make sure I was getting them right. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. You never know what he's gonna do. Always throwing you off guard, this man. It's beautiful. So there you go. That's Friday the 13th, Thelonious Monk, the whole thing. I'd kind of like to play it for you. I'm not super great at it, but at least so you can hear it in context. <laughs> Just start his solo. 
It's hard to read my handwriting when it's up high. But there you go. Hey, don't listen to me play it. You know, skip that part. You're probably sick of me. Go listen to Thelonious Monk play it. That's the most important because he nailed it because he's the one who did it in the first place, right? Yeah, and if my video does nothing today at all, I hope that it makes you want to go listen to more Monk. And to take these devices that we've talked about, all of, all of them, and put them into your own playing. Figure out a way that you can use what you already know, add this to it, and then in some ways you'll be a whole new you. Again, if you'd like this transcription, just click on the card above my head, go to my website, and you'll be able to get it, and then have it for yourself. Thanks everybody for being here today, and I will see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.